Hello, once again, AP Calculus BC students, Mr. Record here from Avon High School for video number three, dealing with integration by parts from topic 6.11 from the Calculus CED. So what we're going to do now in this problem is focus on a very unusual integrand, one that doesn't have a whole lot going on with it, the arc sine of x with nothing else. And to kind of add to it a little bit, we're going to throw in some boundaries so this is an actual definite integral. So if you remember from the previous videos, we have our structure of the integration by parts, our of dov formula, where the integral of u dv is equal to uv times the integral of v du. And in addition to that, we have our progression of what values we should be looking at to be equivalent to u. So in this particular problem, we structure our u and our dv as such, as I've been doing in the previous videos. And we go through the chart and we see, oh, logarithm is our first one. Well, we don't see a logarithm in this problem. So we move to the next value or the next uh, phrase, which is inverse trig, which boom, we've got one of those for sure. So we're gonna place our arc sign right here. And I think I might move this DV over just a smidge. Well, what does that leave to be dv? A lot of times people think, well, you can't have a situation where u sort of eats up your entire integrand. But there is that little piece that's left called the dx, the differential. And it's perfectly acceptable to, on occasion, let that be your dv. Now, in order to continue with this problem, we're going to have to have a pretty good working knowledge on what is the derivative of the arc sine of x. So you're going to have to think back into your memory banks from when you first learned that. And the derivative of arc sine is 1 over the square root of 1 minus x squared. And at that point, we can swing the dx over, and we've got our du there. So we got a pretty nasty looking du in this case. Now, as far as integrating dv equal dx, that's just going to tell us that v is equivalent to x. We basically can allow the integral symbols to cancel away the derivative notation. So with that, I think we're ready to put this together. So what do we have? Well, we know that the integration, let's write this in black here, the integration from 0 to 1. And I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I want to make sure I have plenty of room for this. Um, uh, I think we're OK. I'm going to write small just to make sure. I don't want this to run over into where your example 2 was. So we know that the integration from 0 to 1 of arc sine of x with respect to x would be u times v, so that's the x and the arc sine of x multiplied together. And now the tricky part. We're going to subtract the integration of, and according to the formula, v du. And the v du would be x on top, and then multiply by 1 over the square root of 1 minus x squared, which just means you really have the square root of 1 minus x squared in the denominator with respect to x. Now I want to squeeze this minus sign over a little bit because we must not forget that this is a definite integral and it's very easy to do it. I've seen it happen many times in 30 plus years of teaching that a student will forget that there were boundaries in the problem, work the problem as if there aren't, and they just never make an appearance again. And it's perfectly fine, I suppose, if a student wants to forget that there's boundaries as long as they are cognizant about remembering them at the end. So what I might suggest is that we go ahead and put our such that symbol with the x arc sine x and then keep the boundaries with our integration and, and maybe let this you know, perpetuate through the rest of the solution and then we will never forget that there are boundaries. Just be very careful. On the AP exam, if you're working a definite integral problem and you have a few intermediate steps that don't include the boundaries and then you reintroduce them at the end, it's perfectly acceptable. That will be thought of as a restart and you could certainly earn full credit. Just got to be careful about forgetting them. I'm going to move my camera up here and let's continue working and see what we have. So I'm going to go ahead and use a little extra space here. I know I have x times the arc sine of x just waiting, just itching to be evaluated from 1 to 0. We'll do that in a moment. But I still have some things to do with this integral. So as we think about how to integrate this, all of the strategies that we have talked about, we had a really extensive review over that with our previous lessons. We know that we probably are going to use a u substitution here. 
we think that 1 minus x squared would be a good candidate for u because the derivative of that is negative 2x with respect to x. And lo and behold, this x dx is exactly what we hope to find there. It's exactly what we needed. We're not thrilled about this negative 2, but it's an easy fix because we just simply offset with the reciprocal negative 1 half. And then we multiply that by our new version of this integral, which is just 1 over the square root of u. Or we could think of that as u to the negative half power with respect to u now. Now as far as the boundaries are concerned, you can do a couple of different things here. Um, if you want to go ahead and change those boundaries to u's, it's perfectly acceptable. If you want to continue to integrate this with respect to u, but then back substitute your 1 minus x squared in, then you want to use your boundaries of 0 and 1. Just for the practice sake, I'd like to use the, the boundaries of u. So this 1 that's up here, once plugged in for x is going to produce a 0 boundary, and the 0 that's plugged in for x is going to produce a 1. So it's kind of funny. They just swapped. Let's go ahead and integrate. Well, we're going to still wait on this x times arc sine of x, and the boundaries for that are still 1 to 0. We haven't done much with it yet. And then for this minus negative, I'm going to add the 1 half. And then let's integrate u to the negative half. That would give us u to the positive 1 half, of which I can call square root of u. And then if I divide by 1 half, that's the same as multiplying by a 2. And the boundaries of integration for this expression are going to go from the 0 to 1. Let me get a little crowded here. So I'm going to put that 1 there, and I'll put the 0 to 1 like that. All right, I think we are finally ready to plug and chug. So if we let x be 1, I'm going to be looking at the arc sine of 1 minus, if I plug 0 in, everything disappears. I don't need to worry about anything there. In that case, we get minus 0. And then I'm going to add to that. If I take this expression where the 2's cancel and I plug 0 in for the u, the square root of 0 is, of course, 0. And then I'll subtract, plug in 1 for my u. The square root of 1, of course, is 1. And so really, I have arc sine of 1 minus 1. Well, we could think about arc sine of 1 can be evaluated. If you're a little rusty on your trig, you can just think about what kind of angle measure uh, would have a sine ratio that would be um, opposite side. Uh, let me make sure I get this right. Arc sine of 1, opposite side over hypotenuse. Of course, that's not going to work because this is a, a, a triangle that won't make any sense in this particular case. So you switch over to plan B, which might be thinking about the graph of, of, of uh, the sine curve. There's so many other ways that you can do this, you guys. There's, there's no, you know, doctrine that says you have to be a unit circle person because that's your third option here. But if you think about arc sine of 1, here's our value uh, that's going to give us a 1 on the sine curve. And of course, the arc sine is kind of limited in that it only has a domain that runs from, from um, you know, the, 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 the sine curve has to run from negative uh, pi over 2 to positive pi over 2 in order for its, uh, its inverse to even exist. But in any case, hopefully we come to the conclusion that this is going to happen at pi over 2. And so that's what our arc sine of 1 is going to be, and it always is. And so pi over 2 minus 1 looks to be our final answer to this particular problem. And the only thing left for us to do is check it on the graphing calculator. So here we are with our trusty TI Inspire software. We're going to go into our scratch pad and choose shift plus, which gives us our definite integral. This time we're going to keep the boundaries in there. 0 to 1 is what we want. Put that one in the right spot. And then we're going to choose our trig function, which is the arc sine, inverse sine of x. Integrate with respect to x. We're hoping our answer is pi over 2 minus 1. And lo and behold, it certainly is. Now, another way to think about this, if, if you chose to do that, just kind of thought about this on the fly, is I could switch to a graphing page, and I could think about, hey, well, let's, let's look at the graph of arc sine of x. So it kind of looks like that. And then we could kind of discuss 
the possibility of finding the area under this curve. And I'll tell you what, I'm going to close down this interval a little bit uh, because we don't need all of this space for sure. And let's make this, um, I'll just make that increments of one for right now. I, I know that if we really wanted to, to allow this graph to have the normal behavior, we probably would want to increment the y-axis in terms of pi over twos like that. But anyway, all I'm concerned about doing is just finding the area under this curve because that's what this definite integral is all about. So if I go into menu and choose analyze graph and choose this option right here, just right next to my camera, integral, integral it's going to allow me to choose a lower bound which zero works pretty nicely and i'll sweep over you see the area that we're accumulating there i'll stop right about there and it looks like i have this answer of 5.71 right there 5.71 and that would be the area under the curve expressed as a decimal well if i wanted to go back to my answer here i could very easily take that answer choose control enter and we see that we have that 0.571 that lines with our answer. So we'll return to the document, circle our answer, and we can complete the problem. So as we discovered, the answer of pi over 2 minus 1 is indeed correct. And congratulations, because you've just integrated your first inverse trig expression. And you're going to find out that the other inverse trig expressions will probably integrate very, very similar in a very similar way and use this, this U substitution idea in order to complete it. As you can see in our next example, number four, we've got a treat in store for you where we're going to use a repeated use of integration by parts. So definitely stick around for the solution to example four in a future video. Thanks for tuning in.